Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Shantanu Ganguly from Knowledge Management Division of Terry. Today, we are going to talk on the module Learned Societies and Scholarly Journals from Paper Social Science Information System. The major objectives of this particular paper is to sensitize the knowledge on contemporary issues on the specific subjects, to disseminate the knowledge on the specific subject area using various platforms such as print media, electronic media, electronic media, conferences, discussion forums, and many more. To facilitate the emergence of new subject disciplines in these areas. To create a common platform of the all like-minded researchers and other researchers for a cross-boundary interdisciplinary research. Now let us talk about the learned societies. Learned societies or the academies in organizations are established to promote a specific subjects. These organizations usually promote and ensure the standard of research with their subject through academic publications and conferences. And some act as professional bodies by offering accreditation via membership. One of the means of outreach of these societies is to bring out publications on specific and contemporary areas of research. Now, these publications could be books, journals, occasional papers, and other various types of grey literatures. Now, what are exactly these learned societies? According to Wikipedia, a learned society is basically an organization to set up to promote an academic discipline or a particular profession. They are also known as scholarly society or academic association. These societies are classified based on the specific subjects on whom they are involved into deep research. What is a periodical? Because many of these learned societies bringing out lot of leading periodicals. Now the periodicals which contains multiple articles. And all these articles are often written by different authors on a very subject specific, on a very contemporary issues which are discussed, deliberated and enumerated in a more detailed way. All periodicals are serials which issued at regular intervals and there is a specific Periodicity is defined for each of these periodicals, such as it could be daily, it could be weekly, it could be monthly, it could be quarterly, etc. And are intended to continue indefinitely. But there is in some cases, if you if a particular society does not receive articles or research papers on a continuous basis, it may stop in between. Now, under periodicals, since we are talking about periodicals and the major component of it is periodicity, we also include newspapers, popular magazines, journals, and trade publications too. Usually, it has the option of being received through a subscription mode. Now, these subscription modes are generally of two types. It could be individual subscription. It could be an institutional subscription. Now, both these subscriptions are quite different because in individual subscription, the price is generally kept lower because an individual researcher who is doing a research on this particular area can subscribe to this journal. Let me take an example of Economic and Political Weekly which is a very popular journal in this sector, it can be individually a person can subscribe to this particular journal. Whereas, 
a journal, this EPW or Economic Political Weekly, which is in abbreviated form, we call it as EPW, it can also be subscribed in an institutionally. There is a price difference between the individual subscription rates and the institutional subscription rates. Differentiation between newspaper, magazine and journals. In the previous, we talked about the periodicals. Basically, under the periodicals category, these three I have taken as the main because as LIS professionals, you are going to deal with newspapers, magazines and journals almost every day. So I thought you should know more about these particular components. Newspapers are periodicals that generally are published daily. They are also often called as national dailies. Feature short articles. Articles deal with current events and controversies. It doesn't provide any bibliography and provides little or no bibliographical information about the authors of the article. Whereas if you look at the magazines, magazines are also periodicals that generally are published weekly or monthly. Feature short articles with illustrations. Articles deal with current topics as well as with some research. Very seldom provide a bibliography provide little or no biographical information about the authors of the article. But compared to these two newspapers and magazines, journals are absolutely different. Journals are periodicals that are generally published monthly, quarterly or semi-annually, feature long articles. Articles are focused on research for professionals to use. Articles include footnotes and or bibliography and provide biographical information about the author of the article. Now, if I take examples of newspapers, in India, there are a large number of different linguistic newspapers are available. These are all national dailies. The largest circulation in India is Times of India. In Hindi, you have newspapers like Jansatta, Hindustan. They are all new Hindi newspapers. Or in Bengali, you can have Anandobajar Putrika, you can have Bortoman. Whereas in magazines, if we take, there are a large number of magazines. In fact, some of the magazines are coming up now in thematic areas. Like for example, Outlook. If I take an example of Outlook, Outlook is a magazine, but Traveler's Outlook is a thematic because it talks about only themes of travel. Then there are fashion related or different kind of architecture related magazines are very popular in the market because it the readers gets sensitized by the new developments that are taking place in these magazines or somebody's writing when they are articulating on that. As far as the journals are concerned, journals are very academic oriented, research oriented. You have journals both national and international. You can have journals print online. In some of the cases, only online are available. Some of the cases, if both are available. Now, journals, some of the popular journal in social science area like Economic and Political Weekly, I may talked about, or Sociological Bulletin, or some of the international journals are also available on different thematic areas. Now, let us talk about the advantages of periodicals. We were discussing about these periodicals and all. Now, because they are published frequently, periodicals are the best sources for current information. There is a difference between, you know, the periodicals, whatever you are publishing in the periodicals and published in the book. Book basically comes little later. So, when periodicals is where the current information can be published. Now, the current events are usually discussed in periodicals long before they become the subject of a book. In many cases, what happens on a particular subject thematic areas in a periodical, if it has been covered, later on one can compile it and then the, came out in the form of a book also. Periodicals often contain information on the latest trends, the products, the research, and the contemporary theories which are deliberated by the different researchers in different forum. They are discussed at length, basically, these theories are. 
periodicals are the best source for ephemeral or very specialized information periodicals exist for every field and every interest providing access to a variety of hard to find information and all due to the shorter length of periodical articles more topics may be covered with one volume of a periodical than in one book now when we are talking about periodicals every learned society they come out with a range of author guidelines like for example how to contribute in a periodical what are the methodologies to be followed methodologies in the in terms of like it could be in the terms of font size it in the terms of the figures the tables and very specifically which is very important for the library information science professional to know that the citation and the referencing tool which are used in the periodicals so for a researcher or an author who wants to share his views his skills his talk his uh, his thought process the best instrument or i would say the best vehicle to disseminate the knowledge on that area is a periodical only so there are several advantages of periodicals which are brought out by the learned societies now you will see a differentiation between the scholarly journals popular magazines and trade journals scholarly journals if we take it reports the original research or experimentation often in specific academic disciplines the targeted audiences is the scholarly researcher faculty and students articles are written by experts in the field and are signed articles often use specialized jargon of the discipline and assume a familiarity with the subject illustrations are few and support the text typically in the form of charts graphs and maps often do not include advertisements any advertisements included would be on obtrusive most scholarly journals subject articles to the peer review process prior to publication journals that employ the peer review process are also referred as refereed journals articles usually include footnotes or bibliographies to other sources using a standardized citation format and are typically published on a quarterly basis now some of the examples of scholarly journals are journal of clinical child psychology journal of cultural anthropology and social problems popular magazines it cover the news the current events the hobbies or the in special interest and are targeted at the general public and available to a broad audience articles are usually written by a member of the editorial staff or a freelance writer the language of the articles is geared for any educated audience and does not assume familiarity with the subject matter include many illustrations often with large glossy photographs and graphics for an aesthetically pleasing appearance include advertisements publication does not involve a peer review process sources are sometimes cited but articles do not usually include footnotes or a bibliography and are typically published weekly or monthly some of the popular magazines which people come across these days on uh, you know street vendors and all like glamour newsweek rolling stone time economist us news and world report and many more if you look at trade journals discuss practical information and concerns in a particular industry because it is related to that particular trade actually it contains business news product information advertising trends in the technology and law and are targeted at the professionals in that industry or students researching in that particular industry articles are written by the experts in the field of other experts in the field articles use specialized jargon of the discipline often include colorful illustrations and advertisements and publication does not involve a peer review process sources are sometimes cited 
but articles do not usually include footnotes or a bibliography and typically published weekly or monthly. Some of the leading trade journals are American Libraries, Aviation Week and Space Technology, Chemical Marketing Reporter, Restaurant Business, etc. Now let us talk about what is Social Citation Index. As an LIS professional, you, are, you should know more deeply about this particular area. Social Sciences Citation Index, which is abbreviated as SSCI, is an interdisciplinary citation index product of Thomson Reuters. It's a leading organization in the world today. Healthcare and Science Division, they have brought out it. It was developed by the Institute for Scientific Information, ISI, from the Science Citation Index. In fact, Social Science Citation Index was came out from there itself. The citation database covers something around 2,474 of the world's leading journals of social sciences across the globe. More than 50 disciplines it has covered. It is made up of, made available online through the web of science, which is said to be the world of knowledge for a fee, obviously. This database product provides information to identify the articles cited most frequently and by what publisher and the author. Now, there are a large number of journals. There are a large number of societies, learned societies, they are bringing out journals and all. It is extremely important for the LIS professionals to know which one is best. On a particular subject area, you cannot subscribe it to everybody because it, it will incur a lot of cost. So, what is most important for you to understand what is a journal ranking method? A journal ranking method is widely used in academic circles in the evaluation of an academic journal's impact and the quality. When I'm talking about the quality, the qualitative the research output published in these prestigious journals. Like in India, the Economic and Political Weekly is considered to be one of the prestigious journals in the field of social sciences. Journal rankings are intended to reflect the place of a journal within its field, the relative difficulty of being published in that journal, and Subsequently, the prestige which is associated with it. Now, there are different ranking methods and the most important and the prominent one is called impact factor. Reflecting, which reflects basically the average number of citation to articles published in science and social science journals. The impact factor of an academic journal is a measure reflecting the average number of citations to recent articles published in the journal. And this unique mathematical model was devised by none other than Professor Eugene Garfield, the founder of the Institute for Scientific Information Method Organization. This particular slide will show you the details of the criteria that are devised for the evaluation of resources. As a library information science professional, it is extremely important for you to understand these particular components. The first one is timeliness and the currency. The information should not be old as it might have been superseded by other research work. Authority. Authors and their credentials should be clearly identified. Authors should have an educational background with past writings and our experience in the subject area. In general, government, academic and non-profit websites are more reliable than personal or commercial websites because sometimes the authority or reliability or viability can raise a question. Accuracy and completeness. Information should appear to be valid and well researched. Authors should indicate their research methods and provide supportive evidence for their conclusions. 
should not include obvious errors or omissions and should have a clear cut bibliography next component is objectivity should be informing you not trying to persuade you of something or sell you something information should be fact not opinion note just keep a note that skilled writers can make their opinions seem like facts also quality control should not have obvious errors such as poor spelling poor grammatical language unlikely that is a reliable source would include such kind of errors and all so you have to be very quality conscious and this is going to be an important criteria for evaluation of your resources too coherent organization should be logically organized main point should be clearly presented author's argument should not be repetitive or circular and the last one is reasonableness give what you already know about the subject it should seem reasonable should not contradict informations you have found elsewhere if it does check other sources to deter mind which information is correct now let us talk about the importance of periodical collections in libraries there is a year wise distribution of issues and articles as in the previous uh, in my thought i have already mentioned that it every periodical has got a periodicity like it could be daily weekly it could be you know annually or it could be biannually or quarterly so year wise distribution of the issues and articles is a very important factor authorship pattern and the quantity of authors included in our, in an articles gender wise distribution of authors how many male female they are contributing to it position of authors in articles means some of the leading authors their their articles lead authors articles comes then the review article comes there is a pattern which is generally followed in it authors productivity of articles published by single articles prolific authors in library and information science e journals and the types of institutions and their involvement in the publication prolific institutions and their involvement in publications uh, which context to like pattern of collaborative research like in my previous talk i talked about how the interdisciplinary where in the objective i was mentioning that interdisciplinary research is taking place so the collaborative research in today's globalized world is a very important aspect appearance of continent name in articles which is also sometimes very important because uh, because a lot of case studies comes out in the form of that country of origin of articles percentage of share of international authors journal wise quantity of articles under broad subject headings and the pattern of cited references in the library and information science open access articles now the recent trends if we look at it we are in a era where we uh, we share we don't keep everything with us those dates are gone where you have a silos mentality because you unless you share you cannot go deep into the interdisciplinary research you can't go into the collaborative research then receive and the store information an era of profound still unfolding of changes in professions friends and family and keep in touch with other using the application of web 2.0 like social media a decade or so ago when print journals and books still housed the bulk of scholarly publications stationed in the library and information centers but there is a constant change has taken place into this area because with the digital publishing more and more resources are published in the digital format let us take an example of stm which is called as scientific technical and medical journals monographs reports are disseminated primarily online in electronic formats 
because the when you disseminate it electronically through an online media a large number of people they come to know about your area of research your area of expertise your area of skills the inc this increasing the excellence and also the affordability of print on demand technologies also because you save a lot of paper because online if you are producing and you can make a mass distribution you don't need to print it in journals and also allow printed versions of such publications to remain as an option for more most readers the reason being nowadays space is a very big constraint because over the years a large number of journals periodicals are published later on it becomes a bound journals you need an enormous amount of space to hold them but if you have a perpetual licensing of these journals and all all these journals all these publications in a digital format they are all available with you and they can be accessible anytime anywhere it is just like 24 into 7 it's like an atm machine so all the publishers authors and readers in the humanities and social sciences have noticeably lagged behind their stm counterparts in capitalizing on digital publishing so compared to the scientific technical and medical social science and humanities is slightly slow but yes they are also now capitalizing this digital publishing and having an escalated transition in those fields also bringing it more and more digital content for a widespread your users and everything now why to publish digital electronically digital publishing eliminates extensive upfront cost such as printing and shipping loss of journals is a big problem with the libraries and information centers whereas in digital you are uh, only you have to send have an internet connectivity for accessing this and for a perpetual collections you have all the resources with you readers across the globe thus have equally affordable access to research online also some traditionally expensive types of print publications such as those of inordinate length steeped in color or laid out on glossy paper stock can be disseminated digitally in a more cost effective manner so at the end of it i would like to tell you learned societies and their corresponding scholarly journals play a extremely pragmatic role in disseminating the knowledge to a wide range of research fraternity this is one of the important vehicle for any learned organization to share his views share his thoughts share his knowledge share his skills share his expertise to a more interdisciplined or to a wide range of researchers who are globally placed across the globe thank you very much students